totally knew this would happen. I've got a video going out. I'm going to try and get this out maybe 30 minutes before a video that I recorded a few weeks ago testing the different AIs against a Figma design. You pass it a Figma design. How does it compete? How do all the different tools compete? And then this morning, I'm just about ready to leave for a trip. And then I stumble across this awesome tool. And it's just a two man team that have managed to pull off an AI design app builder. So first of all, look at this. This is cool. I mean, funny enough, the performance isn't so good on my MacBook Pro here, but on my iPad, it's super smooth, but you've got this wicked effect here. Uh, really cool. And look, Onlook is a great next generation visual code editor that lets designers and product managers craft web experiences with AI. If that doesn't get your juices flowing, I don't know what will. Let me sign in because I've created an account. I don't, I've got an app prepared, which, you know, lighted my fire of checking out this tool. But let's see how it gets on. So in the video later on today, I pass all of these different tools, the same design and see how it achieves it. And I just, I one shot at this on my, on my MacBook and not only does it look okay, still not going to escape the fact that AI doesn't do a great job at copying your design. It was functional to an extent. Let's, let, let me just show you. I'm going to try and do the same prompt, see how far we get. Build an AI application. I then passed it my design and hit go. And not only was it really, really fast, the, the, the result is incredible. Now there's one thing to say about the sort of output you're seeing here, um, especially if you're a designer or someone non-technical, this looks pretty darn scary, but we'll go over that. But while it's doing that, as you can see, you've got various design controls here, which is something the Lovable and Replit are starting to introduce some of these design controls, which is really nice. But you've got to remember, this is a two-man team, and this is a beta product. This isn't something that's actually launched yet. Now, I encountered these errors in the first time I did it, but this has been running, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes. Oh, we actually have something here. So... It, it automatically fixed the errors. Uh, this doesn't look as good as the previous one that I uh, was playing around, but if we hit preview here, you can see that stuff is actually, I mean, it's not gonna do that, but this stuff is, is sort of working as a simulated response. Um, it's functional, which is probably a bit more than what my video later on today were doing. But shout out to my mate Ollie who shared this with me. Uh, this was the, the Hacker News post that he sent. I'm Kier, one half of two person team building Onlook. An open source, which is really, really important, visual editor that lets you edit and create rap react apps live on an infinite canvas. So this is, this is something like Framer. This is something like Figma, a free flowing kind of design first tool it's a lot friendlier to use than the rigid sort of you know if you want to call it a canvas of um of code editing two months ago we decided to move away from electron and rewrite everything for the browser very smart move we wanted to remove the friction for downloading hundreds of uh, megabytes and setting up a development environment just to use the app fair play wrote more here how we did it but here is something learning for the whole migration whilst most of the react ui code can be reused mapping electrons single page application experience to an xjs app with root is non-trivial on the state management side yeah i mean doesn't matter what like that's just gonna cause you a lot of pain anyway we were storing most of the data locally as large JSON objects, moving that to remote database required for major infrastructure into tables, loading states, various things like that. I, I don't think about the, the costs that they've had to incur because of this. iframes in the browser enforce many more restrictions than the Electron web, flu, web view. If you ever used iframes, it's a pain in the bum. They've made it a lot better. Um, I say in recent years, but they made it a lot better than what it once was with messaging being passed through, but it's still absolutely a pain. And obviously you've got security as well that you need to take into account. Keeping an API key secure is much easier on the web application than the Electron app. I've got not much experience with Electron. I built a couple of apps with it, but I can't can, uh, attest to that. Every key we leave on the client can be statically accessed. And I guess you can break into the application. So hence why we had to proxy an SDK. Uh, pushing the release button, Electron can take one hours. Some users may never update. Wow, yeah. 
Uh, we start by connecting to a remote sandbox. The visual editing component happens through an iframe. We map the HTML. This might be something they look into changing. I, I mean, I don't know how any of the other tools do it. My understanding is they're probably using something like, um, I'll put it on the screen now. It's escaping me. I've got to leave in like an hour, so I need to get this out of the way. But we map the HTML element in the iframe to the location in code, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're still ironing out experiences. You can already select elements, prompt changes, updated Tailwind CSS uh, styling in the UI, draw in new divs and elements, draw in new divs and elements, preview on multiple screen sizes, edit your code through an in-browser IDE. Want to make it a trivial for anyone to create, style, and edit code bases. We're still port porting over functionalities from the desktop app, layers, fonts, ho uh, hosting, etc. Once that's done, we own support backend. Special thank you to 70... Con wow. I mean, it's a two-man team, but they've already got 70 contributors. That's really, really cool. Um, you can clone the project. This is this is what's nice, is that it's actually open source. You can run it locally on your machine. Maybe we can get and do that at some point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, let's dive in and take a little look at Onlook. It's also worth saying they've got a desktop app. So, yeah, this is this is looking good. Code as you design. You can change the classes and things like this. This website is super nice looking. I've got to say, the design of it is really cool. So let's just jump back into the version that was created earlier, just because it sort of seemed to work a bit better. But again, going to preview, all of this stuff. Like th th there's some functionality. Yeah, the design is not quite there, though it's close. But we can still change this. We can still talk to the AI. There's no API key set up, but this is a simulated response. This is a really, really good start. A lot better than what the uh, the video that's coming out later on today. Um, what I haven't looked too much into is how do we get that window, I mean, edit text, um, unless it's a, an old version, the only design controls I can see are up here. I mean, we can draw, here we go, we can insert divs here. Pan, oh, I guess this is, this is the infinite canvas they're talking about. I'm going to delete that now. Uh, delete. Okay. Oh. Cannot delete that. It seems like a... My only criticism here is probably that there's just a lot of technical stuff that, that, that potentially they could keep away from the simple stuff um, but that's a hard battle to win with me to be honest because I think Replit's amazing because it gives you the technical stuff whereas Loverboard is just so much more approachable because it abstracts it all away but if we look at the code um, the code here you can edit the you can add the code I want to uh, how do I get rid of that div that I created can we see this div I mean the code looks really clean to be honest so I guess it's Model selector. So I can't actually see this div that I want to that I want to now delete. It's a little bit janky. I mean, I'm using an M1, which, believe it or not, is probably nearly four or five years old now, which is crazy. But we check background color here. We've got, oh yeah, this is another thing. We've got brand colors here. It'd be nice if it picked up the brand colors of the design that I uploaded to it. But regardless, we can change the, the background color to Tailwind, I guess this all is. So make that, can we make that red? Okay, stuff isn't kind of working here as, of, as nicely as I would like. But again, we're still in sort of beta. So there's my new window here. Responsive as well. A fair amount of work to be done on this, but I think this shows really interesting progress and given the video that's going to be coming out shortly it's just one another solution to add to the equation um, really promising from just a, a, a few open source developers this is the sort of direction i'd love to see these tools go in where it's just as front and the design aspect is just as front and center as the vibe coding aspect would love 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 to see more integrations with, say with super base or more 
you know um realistic back-end functionality as well the fact that this is built in i think this is a next js yeah it's a next js app as well so this is really really interesting tool and the design overall i think looks pretty sick let us know what you think if you are a designer let us know what you're looking for in these apps whether this answers some of these questions maybe not in its current form but this is this the general direction you want these tools to go in I'm still always on the hunt for new and interesting tools. Let me know of anything you've seen as well. Like, double check that subscribe button just to make sure you are. And uh, until next time, keep on vibing.